uh, we're able to sort of cheat the system here. So it's discovered on Reddit, you can think of this similar to a sort of video game hack where users were helping each other out and... Uh, <laughs> I am a toady! I mean, enough already! Grow up! Well, you might want to. I should buy more GameStop. Have you ever heard of money? Have you wondered how you could make more? Got dreams of your Lambo on your yacht in the pool of your mansion? Then r slash Wall Street Bets probably isn't the place for you. But if you're financially irresponsible and want to speedrun bankruptcy, then welcome, you'll fit right in. I'm sure you all heard of the GameStop price hike that happened a few months back. Well, it's all thanks to a bunch of diamond-handed, tendy-wielding apes praying to Elon Musk from their mom's basement for their one-way ticket to the moon. For the uninitiated, Wall Street Bets is a Reddit community that focuses on stock trading. But don't be fooled. This is not good advice. Now, if we take a look at Sundial's Q4 earnings in 2020, we can clearly see that it's not the best- Funny internet man say stock go up. Please give me 1,000 call options. Uh, money computer go beep boop. When coronavirus hit, it tanked the stock market. People lost their jobs and livelihoods. But all of that was solved with an injection of roughly $9 trillion of stimmy checks directly into every single citizen. Thanks to three guys, the market was saved, and coronavirus was successfully a- What happened next was beautiful. A down stock market, millennials, boredom, money? Let's talk about brokerages. They come in all shapes and sizes from TD Ameritrade to Fidelity to Qtrade. They're everywhere. There are differences and some are better than others. But if you're planning on belt sanding your brain into an oblate spheroid, then do what we all do and get yourself a Robinhood account. No commission fees on trading? Woohoo! Woohoo! Me likey. The next thing you gotta do is understand the basics of options trading because this is your only dance move. To put it simply, it's a contract between two people stating that I have the option to buy or sell a bunch of shares at some point in the future at a price we agree upon today. From there, you can choose to either exercise the contract and buy or sell those shares, or sell the contract to someone who knows even less than you to recoup your losses. Because let's face it, no one has ever made money on this subreddit. Options trading comes with a bit of a bonus feature, margin. You see, if you invest $10 and double your money, congratulations, you've already done better than literally everyone on Wall Street Bets. But you only made 10 bucks. Or you could opt for the ultra Chad option and take on some margin. Margin allows you to borrow money for you to invest, typically coming in packages of two, five, 10, 20, and even 100X. To put that into context, let's take that original 10 bucks and apply 100X margin to it you borrow 100 times your capital, leaving you with $1,010 to invest. You double the money and pay back your leverage, leaving you with a profit of $975. This gives you the potential for massive gains, but also the potential for earth-shatteringly massive losses. Now that you're armed and ready, let's get in there, soldier. There exists a kind of Hall of Fame on Wall Street Bets for the biggest wins and the biggest losses. And oh man, are the losses big. 
Meet Anal Farmer 2, a 19-year-old university student with 5,000 US dollars and a death wish. Remember Margin? Well, with a clean 25 times leverage, he YOLO'd his entire portfolio on Align Technology call options. 24 hours later, by seemingly divine intervention, his YOLO made him exceedingly wealthy, skyrocketing his portfolio to over $300,000 in five minutes from market open. The next day, he decided to implement a new strategy. Market up today, market go down tomorrow. It was genius. He yoloed $170,000 on spy options, betting that the market would go down. Thanks to a rogue tweet from Agent Orange himself, down the market went, and with it, propelled Anal Farmer 2's portfolio well over $600,000. But, like Icarus, he flew too close to the sun, and down he plummeted, into the oceans of loss. Down and down he went, from bad call to bad call, eventually losing everything he had yoloed for. Another standout of the community, Irony Man, would go down in Wall Street Bet's history as the man who changed a trading platform forever. This might get a little confusing, but bear with me here. In options, there's a thing called a spread. You play both sides of the table, putting a limit on your gains, but minimizing your losses. Typically, spreads like the Iron Condor or Iron Butterfly are considered low to medium risk. But Irony Man didn't like low risk. He wanted no risk. He implemented a box spread, which is extremely complicated and basically equates to betting a stock will go down and up at the same time and exploiting pricing inefficiencies. These really aren't profitable, and the commission fees would normally be enough to deter most people from even trying it. But our friend here was a Wall Street Bets user, and a Robinhood user. And Robinhood has no commission fees. Show me that native AK, baby! Wow! Within a few hours, Irony Man's portfolio dropped from $5,000 to over $60,000 in debt. That's a 2,000% loss on the day. But before the investment team at Robinhood figured out what was going on, Irony Man had collected the premiums from selling his contracts and withdrew $10,000 from his account, doubling his money, while losing Robinhood over $50,000. Based. His account was closed immediately, and an email soon followed, banning box spreading on the platform. Legends never die, though, and Irony Man still walks the realm of the living. If I don't mention control the narrative, then is this really a Wall Street Bets video? I hate this channel. He was the man who discovered an infinite money glitch. One trader was claiming on Reddit that he took a $1 million position with only $4,000 worth of deposits. Another claimed that he got 25 times leverage and $50,000 worth of buying power to buy some stock. So Robinhood acknowledging the glitch and that this happened, a spokesperson uh, telling CNBC, they're aware of the isolated situations and are communicating directly with customers. Here's how it worked. Control the Narrative was a Robinhood Gold member, which is a monthly subscription service that gives him access to two times leverage on his capital. He took his $2,000 and Robinhood gave him 2,000 back. Easy enough. He used his new $4,000 of buying power and bought 100 shares of AMD. Remember options? Well, with his new 100 shares, he can sell something called a covered call. A covered call is an option where you sell someone the right to purchase your 100 shares of stock from you for a certain price at a certain point in the future. Typically, the strike price will be a few percent out of the money. This is a solid trading strategy. Because if the stock price never reaches the target price, the contract becomes worthless. You get to keep your shares, but you also get to keep the premium on the option you sold. The price of a contract depends on a few things. One, how far out of the money the option is. And two, how much time is left until the option expires. Time decay, or theta decay, means that the closer your option is to expiry, the less the option is worth. And while you should sell contracts out of the money, there's nothing stopping you from selling your contracts in the money. Control the Narrative took full advantage of this and sold a covered call for the astronomically low strike price of $2 with a really long time until expiry. The amount of premium he collected on this was a lot, like more than his initial investment worth. Because the leverage he acquired was used to purchase the shares, the premium he collected on the options was all his, fully laundered. He then took his $4,000 went back to Robinhood, and got another two times leverage on his capital. You see where I'm going with this? While some people took the amount of leverage into the millions, 
control the narrative only took it to his personal risk tolerance of $50,000. He immediately took his money and put it all on a risky Apple put right before earnings report, fully expecting it to tank. They plowed through their earnings, like they always do. Control the Narrative decided to livestream Market Open to let people watch his losses in real time. <laughs> Gah. A phrase that is immortalized in the Wall Street Bets lexicon, meaning losing 50k in 30 seconds. Everybody on Wall Street Bets loses money. Unless, of course, you make money. The lucky few who manage to make meaningful gains somehow make more money than I could even imagine. And in one case, by complete accident. There's a Kolu who yellowed 50k into the electric car company Neo and bagged over 1.5 million dollars. Then there's this guy, who bet $100,000 on Tesla and walked out with a clean 2 million. And then there's DHS Matt and Lurking Since 2006, who both made over $4 million on purple mattress yellows. But these high scores are chump change when you compare them to the big daddy of Wall Street bets, the Gamecock of GameStop himself, Keith Gill. The Roaring Kitty, better known by his Reddit handle, username Deep Fucking Value. You didn't need to be on Reddit to hear about the GameStop thing. But what happened? It's September 8th of 2019, and DFV has made his first post to Wall Street Bets in the form of gains from his original $50,000 YOLO into long positions on the brick and mortar video game retailer GameStop. These positions included 50,000 shares and 500 call options expiring in April of 2021. People initially told him that this was the stupidest thing that they had ever seen. You stupid. No, no. Telling him to sell immediately and close his position but DFV had no intention of selling. Over the course of the next two months, his position would double up once again over 200k. The people screamed even louder to sell. This was it. But DFV wanted more. He sat on his hands, held his breath, and his portfolio value fell sharply from $200,000 all the way down through 44,000, lower than his initial investment. He kept holding. He knew the light was coming, but nobody else had faith. And then it happened. By December of 2020, his portfolio was up over 3.8 million. His YOLO paid off big time, but he didn't win the Wall Street Bets high score just yet. In January of 2021, a flood of smooth-brained retail investors driven by shit posts, mob mentality, and a double berry stimmy check caused GameStop's share price to rocket up, which caused more people to flood in, which caused the price to go higher. DFV's portfolio appreciated in value by an absurd amount, with his unrealized gains hitting $48 million at its apex. His sheer density of profit created a gravitational singularity so powerful it dragged even more people onto the subreddit. At the beginning of December 2020, Wall Street Bets was hovering somewhere around 1.6 million subscribers. But during DFV's legendary run, the subreddit amassed more than 8 million more, and is still growing today. The people who joined fully embraced the YOLO mentality and spent hundreds of thousands, if not millions, on billboards, signs, and advertisements for GameStop. Memes flooded in by the thousands. People made music, art, and all the while, the big hedge funds on Wall Street shook in their boots and lost billions of dollars betting against the dying company. And even in May of 2021, the hedge funds are still losing money. If you haven't gathered by now, Wall Street Bets is full of apes. But this time, I mean it literally. By the end of March 2021, in tribute to their catchphrase, Apes Together Strong, from the 2011 film Rise of the Planet of the Apes, the Wall Street Bets community banded together and did something kinda remarkable. 
Hi, Wall Street Bets. My name is Tara Stowinski. I'm the president and CEO of the Diane Fossey Gorilla Fund. And I was just made aware that you have been adopting gorillas through our website. And I just wanted to say thank you so much for this incredible support. In case you're not familiar with us, we are the world's largest and longest running organization that is fully dedicated to gorilla conservation. Every day, 365 days a year, we are in the field protecting the world's remaining gorillas and also helping the people who share their forest home. So thank you again so much for your support. It will go a long way in helping our important mission. Wall Street Bets members have donated around $377,000 to the Diane Fossey Gorilla Fund, adopting over 3,500 gorillas. But they didn't just stop there. They sponsored a few whales, a leopard, a hedgehog, and a guy going by the name of Deep Falcon Valley decided to sponsor, well, a falcon. And you know, as degenerate a place Wall Street Bets is, it's nice to see them spend a little less money on wild turkey bourbon and old English 800. And do something good for them. At the time of writing this, it's now May 12th, 2021. GameStop mania has settled down somewhat. And while a select group of apes are still diamond handing their stocks, most of the community has moved on to pumping another couple stocks into Infinity, like Microvision and AMC. These two stocks are in the same position as GameStop. Their stocks have been oversold, and soon, the hedge funds need to buy all the shares back. When that happens, it will trigger a feedback loop, causing the price to massively soar to heights never seen before. And believe you me, we will make history. Who knows what's next for this community? Maybe Wall Street Bets will be the first group to put an actual silverback gorilla on the moon. For the time being, myself and millions of other Wall Street Bets apes are clutching onto hundreds, thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of shares of AMC, waiting for our attendees to cook. Maybe when this is all over, I'll invite you all to a movie in my very own theater. But for now, while we're all sailing the turbulent seas of the stock market, I guess there's only one thing left to do. So wait, you'd rather sing shanties with the boys rather than having sex with me? Buy it low, boys, up she go, boys, swing her price round into the heavens. Buy it low, boys, up she go, boys, squeezing upward toward the moon. What care we though long the hold is? What care we boys for hedgy trickery? When we know that every day is squeezing upward toward the moon. Buy it low, boys. Up she go, boys, swing her price round into the heavens. Buy it low, boys, up she go, boys, squeezing upward toward the moon. Tendies waiting in the freezer, Diving head first into the fryer. Hold her close, boys, then we'll make it on a rocket toward the moon. Buy it low, boys, up she go, boys, swing her price round into the heavens. Buy it low, boys, up she go, boys, squeezing upward toward the moon. Citadel now, heavy laden, hedges bleeding, Melvin's a crying. We'll return yet at market open, push the green line toward the moon. Buy it low, boys, up she go, boys, swing her price round 
sound into the heavens. By its low voice, up she go, boys, squeezing upward toward the moon. By its low voice, up she go, boys, swing her price round into the heavens. By its low voice, up she go, boys, squeezing upward toward